the, uh, the agenda for today um, is that last time that we were together to talk about this stuff, we were kind of talking about how to manage the dashboard, how to set up our coaches, um, and just some, you know, some, some things about the surveys themselves and how you want to manage those for your school. And so today's kind of the, the, the side where we're going to talk just briefly about how to do this well from a best practice standpoint. Um, our school has been doing this for about six, five or six years and learned a lot from the way that we did it wrong. Um, and also learn a lot from other schools and how they've been able to, to manage it. And so here's some best practices today for sending evaluations, talking to students when they're standing in front of you as they're about to take the evaluation, um, and then how to manage some of the data and the results. My hope is that we're done in you know, 15 minutes or so, and then there's a chance for everybody to ask questions or stop me in the middle, whatever works best for you. Uh, this, this is for you. Uh, to help you uh, with this. And so please don't hesitate to, to ask questions, okay? So uh, point number one was best practice for setting evaluations. Um, I'm gonna quick share a couple of things with you just so that you can see uh, some of this stuff. But um, first thing I wanna show you is like, this is a copy of our dashboard here. And on the left side here, there's a, a resource tab. If you were to click that tab, it would bring you to uh, a page um, that you could click on the evaluation process. There's a tab for evaluation process, okay? Um, and so when you do that, it kind of talks through, it has a, you know, uh, a written version of a lot of the things we're going to go through today. But the one I want to focus on is the, um, you know, sending evaluations part. And so one of the way that you can get the evaluation to kids is obviously to, um, you know, to press start new evaluation, let me see if I can minimize this. So is that better? You not as much blocked out. So if you do start new, obviously you're gonna um, you're gonna have a chance to grab your um, your links, and then you can build emails. So what one of the things uh, the strategies that we use at our school is I open up a Gmail and I uh, go to the team roster and I copy all the emails for the students from the team roster. I paste them into the uh, blind copy, and then I put. Um, coach eval and then I link this link right here I just do a, a copy of this link and then I hyperlink that to the email and it says coach coach survey and then once I talk to the kids then I send it another thing that schools have done which I think is a really great thing is to use like a QR code generator so you just take that same link and you can put it in here it gives you a QR code I just take a screenshot of that so like command shift four on apple do a screenshot and then I put that on a bunch of pieces of paper and then the kids can just, you know, that would say like soccer coach. And then you just scan that with your phone and then they can uh, open up the survey. So, you know, kind of pick, pick the style that you think for like sending it out, whether that's a link um, in an email or whether you don't mess with emails at all and you just uh, have some QR codes ready. Those are probably the two most effective ways to do it. The beauty of the email is that if a student can't be there, maybe they, um, they have a study hall, like something they couldn't be at a study session. They still get it in their email and I can just follow up with that student and say, hey, if you don't mind, uh, just click on that eval in your email and you'll be good to go. Where if you do the QR code, um, not everybody necessarily gets it. When you do an email, uh, that, that helps make sure that everybody, everybody gets it. So um, those are two, two ways that seem to work um, really well for us. The third way is that some schools have a harder time getting... Um, getting all of the students together. So like our school has something called focus time, which is about to happen uh, in about two minutes at our school. Um, and what that looks like for us is, you know, I can make a session, right? For senior coach evaluations, because now they're gonna graduate um, before, you know, everybody else is done with school. So I need to get all my senior evals done. So I can create a session. Uh, all the kids have to attend that. There's attendance taken. And then I can go speak to them in person. So we have this cool thing called focus period, um, which if your school is interested in that, I can tell you how our school got into it. But some of you have different ways to do that. And that's the best way to do it is embedded in the school day. Otherwise, you can go to a practice and uh, bring a QR code to practice and uh, talk to the kids and then have them scan the code. So those are ways to get the, the, the actual survey into your, into your students' hands. The next part on the evaluate, like on the agenda today, is then how do we talk to those kids, right? How do we ensure valid, you know, reliable data um, when we're talking to kids and coaches? Well, point one is that we have to explain it the same way, right? Um, whatever we explain to kids, we also have to explain to coaches. 
we can't explain a bunch of things to kids and then just send it to the coach and they interpret it how they want. So my advice to you is to kind of follow um, what I have on that resource page um, about, you know, some of these hints for how to handle the student meeting. Uh, so you can read through this if you want, you can access it on your computer, but basically here's, here's kind of a way that I talk to kids when we do it is I, I, I kind of welcome them and I say, hey, it's been so fun to watch you for these four months. Um, we would love for you to take 15 minutes today to give a gift back to your program. Your coach loves you and cares for you. That's why um, they've been hired to be part of our program and they want you to have a great experience. And so um, we want you to take 15 minutes to really think and digest the information from your season and, and give us some really good feedback so that we can work with your coach on how to improve um, your experience in the program. And I always say for seniors, this is your chance to leave a gift to the program of how to make things better. You would have wanted that from the groups ahead of you. So please do that for them. And everybody else, this is your chance to, to hopefully um, build a, a stronger program for the years that you come back. Um, so those are, those are some things that I say. <laughs> There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so then that's kind of how I intro it with them. Um, so then the next thing I talk about is like confidentiality. So I talk to them about, hey, it's really important you know that the only person that sees this survey is me and Mr. Hirama, who's our head athletic director. Um, and nobody else sees it. We're the only two people that are going to see it. Uh, and so we have you put your name on it. We want your name on it, number one, for accountability. Um, but number two, because if there's an outlier, um, we want to know. Like that's, That would be like everybody feels one way, but, but then you answer something way different. That's interesting to us because we want to definitely make sure that we're paying attention to all of our students. And so we need to know who would say that because we might want to follow up with you and just say, hey, what, what was going on with that? Could you tell me a little more about that? Um, because we care about your experience. And so your name being attached keeps us accountable to our answers, but also it helps us uh, pay attention to who you are and what your specific experience was. And so you need to know that your coach will never see these answers. Anything you write, we will summarize into a theme. We want the coach to know what you all care about and what was important, but we don't need them to know who said it because that's not helpful. Then they worry, you and them worry more about who said what instead of what the message is. So we will always summarize things, never quote. Um, and all of your answers that you fill out in the bubble section, they all come out as an average. So these are things I explain to kids to help them understand that they can give us a really good valid um, response and it will be held in confidentiality with us. And uh, each year that you do this, they, they believe you more and more, right? Uh, they, they start to believe you more and more about that because the, the stuff doesn't get out. And we want them to be honest. I always tell them, be totally honest. If you're not honest, we can't get better. Um, so fourth, you know, the, uh, the survey bubbles, you know, I always explain to the kids that like, hey, if you got a 50% in class, that would be a failure, right? Like, um, that, that's not good. But on a survey like this, we really want you to start at the 50% point. The middle bubble is actually like the norm. So like whatever you would consider to be like normal or regular or yep, okay, not good or bad, just like regular, that's where you start every single question. And if it's better than that, then you're gonna move to the right. If it's not as good as that, then you're gonna move to the left. So the majority of your answers um, should be centered around the, the, the middle with a couple that probably reach to one side or the other in a, in a more uh, emphatic way. And so don't think that the middle is bad. The middle is like, good. It's the norm. It's like, okay, all right. And so trying to explain that to them so that they don't just hang on one side and just like give all tens or nines or something like that um, is really important to help them understand. It also gives us more reliable, reliable data. So I always explain that about the bubbles. Number five here says the whole season. Um, one of the things I always say to the kids is, hey, when you do this, you know, you have to be mature. Like some of you are freshmen, some of you are seniors, but you have to be mature here. We're giving you the opportunity to pour in. Would you ever want a coach to judge you based on one bad thing that you did? And they all say no. He says, so then don't do that to your coach. If you had one bad thing or one thing that you didn't like, 
you can't write the whole survey based on that one thing. You would never want that for you. Don't give that to them. You have to be mature in that way. Just like we ask all of our coaches to be mature in that way for you. And so that's a good thing to explain to them. I also write number six there. I always say, hey, if you got an assistant coach who we're not evaluating, but you wanted to say something uh, that, that was important, just write their name in. Uh, in the written section into one of those boxes. And we will um, make sure that that information gets passed on in the same way that we would to a coach. We would never quote it, but you can still comment on those coaches. Um, so that's kind of the, the main strategy that we take to explain it to kids in the meeting. The next part is, you know, so you'll get, as, we've, as I've shown you a couple of times before, if you've been in some of these meetings, um, what you'll get back is, um, you know, you'll see on your dashboard um, that, you know, 16 students, 11 parents, and one coach have responded. So then you know you're pretty close to the end. And we've reviewed before, like, how do we, how do we know which students have done it? Let's say Jamie actually had um, 24 kids on her team and only 16 responded. I can go to individual and I can see the names of these kids and I'm able to check who actually responded and who didn't. That way I know who to connect with if I need to get more responses. Same thing with parents. That's another reason we attach names to it. So once you feel like you've got a, a good enough portion of responses that you're ready to do it, you, you know, you'll push view comments on the first screen. So on this screen here, um, you know, when we stop the evaluations, the next button is uh, down here by where it says no responses. It says view comments. So if you do that, that brings you to um, this page right here. And this automatically shows up. So now we're talking about what is, how do we manage the data, right? Like we're gonna get this data and I'm telling you everybody in here and everybody who's gonna watch this video, the data can be extremely powerful. Well, what I mean by that is like, it can be empowering, it can be destructive, um, it can be, um, it can be a mix of those two things based on where the coach thinks they are and what you were thinking. As I was saying, perception by us is not always reality. It's powerful data. And so the last two things I have on here is like, how do we use this data to get the best results for coach? And then the tip there is like, don't show them everything. So as you can see here with this coach, <clears throat> we've got responses from kids that um, we try to build some themes on. Now this coach uh, is a coach for us that had a, uh, was a first year coach. I know you all have some first year coaches, right? There's a lot of things that are good and bad with first year coaches. And sometimes because of the way that society is now, even if a coach has a good year, but they had a trouble with a parent or a couple of kids, they think they should quit and it's just too hard and they're not good and all those things. So we have to be careful as we build the metal of our younger coaches uh, to be able to manage those things. So you know, we're, we're going to try to pick out some really positive things uh, for the coach uh, to pay attention to that we really want out of all of this data. And, um, you know, down here with the improve one, this coach is somebody who needed some encouragement. So there's all these things that people want to improve. And it might be um, accurate for me to, to take all, every single one of these themes and write them down. But sometimes sharing all of that accuracy could hurt the coach because you'll, you'll end up picking on too many things and it can be overwhelming and actually hurt their confidence. And so what you have to do is know your coach, figure out what do they need to hear? Some coaches need some encouragement. So I'm going to take these things they want to see improved and maybe we're just going to make it a little bit shorter with something specific to work on. There was probably five or six things. If I let you guys read all these that we could have talked to coach about. But the main one that we think she needed to work on based on the comments and stuff was just this one thing. So even though it would be true to put a synopsis of all of this in, our desire was to not show her everything and show her the one thing that she could really focus on. Now, you have to take that for whichever coach you're doing and decide how to manage that. Because if we show her all that, she could be really broken and think, oh, I'm just not good enough to do this, right? And so we have to try to find a way to know to know what she needs. And so, you know, you, you can look through all of the data and figure out the positive things. We try to be a little bit more, more um, complete in a lot of our positive situations. And then when it comes to parents, again, you're going to have the same thing. This is very powerful information. Every coach wants to do a good job for parents and kids. So we just have to be careful about, um, you know, what we're, what we're showing her 
in these areas. And so there's a delicate balance between what this coach needs to hear and what this, what we need this coach to hear to be encouraged to move forward while also improving. And so this is what I'm saying about don't show them everything. Come up with those things and make sure that you're uh, presenting them what they need to, to, to become successful and to become just that, you know, that couple of percent better each year by hitting the main thing that they can, that they can go on. So again, you can just see all of this data is in here and it's very powerful data. So just be careful how you use it. The other thing I'll say about the, um, the scored questions here is we might see some, some things in here that are worth talking about, but maybe because it's a young coach, we're going to have 12 of the 20 things. There's a discrepancy in number. And what we choose to do in those situations is really pick the theme, right? So if the theme is communication with students about how things are going, we're going to find those, those categories in here and highlight those. Even though there's a bunch of things to highlight in here, um, we might just pick one or two of these instead of going through all of them. Like this one is a big one. She obviously doesn't feel very strong about how she does this. And the kids feel okay about it. And so we want to empower her in that place, right? Coach feels really bad about how she does this, right? Um, but the kids are pretty good with how she manages them. So we want to empower her. So this was a coach, as I said, who needed a little bit of love, right? And so we wanted to pick on the things where she, we could empower her and encourage her. And then, you know, to improve those numbers, she could just try to fix this one or two things. So um, hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of, how to use data and not focus on all of the data. If you talked about every one of these points, you'd be in an evaluation for two hours, you know. And how do you get this to parents? Uh, we have, we rarely, other than our preseason team meeting, have a full, full roster of parents in one place. Is, is that also an email? I know sometimes, at least for, for us, parents aren't always the best about checking email. Mm -hmm. um, kind of best way to get it out there. Yeah, typically what we've done um, is we kind of send a primer email with about two weeks left in the season. And we say to parents, hey, um, we just kind of did, you know, whatever it is for like when we start the student evals, like we'll say to parents so they know we're seeking their child's feedback. Hey, we had, you know, student um, surveys done about coach and really enjoyed that process. We want you to know that a survey for you, if you're interested in providing us feedback to help us build our program, will be coming out shortly. So a little primer email, and then we'll send them an email with that link in it. And again, we don't, we want parents to give us their feedback, but we're not going to be as specific as like making the parents show up to something like we do with the kids, right? Um, if they're not going to fill it out, we're not going to grind them for it. We just try to do a little primer so that they know we're, you know, reminding them that in our culture, we're, we're, we're seeking your child's feedback about the season and the leadership. And then we're also going to seek yours in a couple of weeks. So, you know, be ready for that. So um, Carolyn does that for us. She just sends the primer email and then she sends the, um, the email to the parent groups, um, you know, that link for that, that sport to the parent group um, once the season's over, Andy. Kevin, talk about timing. Um, the season ends, you know, late February. When are you doing the student survey and when are you doing the parent survey? Let's say it ends February 28th. Yeah, um, so we, whenever possible. So, so as you all know, spring is a weird season for this because most of the sports don't end until after school's done, right? And a lot of us lose our seniors a couple weeks early. So this is actually a hard season to do it. However, um, it is always going to be the same style, uh, same time of season, year to year to year. So they're still going to get a valid survey because we're always going to have seniors while the game, while the season's going on. We're always going to have the sophomores through juniors about two weeks later um, before they end school and then parents after. So spring is a little bit more shifted. In a regular season like fall or winter, what we try to do is provide about one week from the end of a season to do the student meeting. And then we'll, we'll do that primer email, usually the last week of the season for the parents. And then about a week after the kids, we'll send that parent email out and we leave that open for about, I think we tell them five days, you know, so there's some urgency for them to, to manage it. We just say it'll be closed on March 11 or whatever. So 
we tell them that. But we, we try to wait one week of decompression from the season end. And so sometimes what we'll do is we'll take um, freshmen and JV, boys and girls basketball, bring them all in at the same time because their season ends at the same time while varsities are still going. And we'll handle that small group first, handle the fresh the varsity teams whenever their seasons end a week after that. So that's kind of our best practice is one week after the season ends for the students and about one to two weeks after for the parents, if you do parent surveys. So good question. And it's tough in the spring. Like you saw my thing. We're doing seniors next week for us on Tuesday, I believe. Um, even though they're still all pretty much in season, it's just the only way we can get a good response from them. And as a spring coach, I coach golf. Last year, um, this timing was like the worst part of our season. And so that was reflected in some way in, in the evaluation for me, where if we would have taken it on June 15, when the season ended and we finished like very, very well and everybody was fired up and excited, I probably would have got some different information. Right. So, um, but, but for me, I'm always going to get seniors at this time. And I know that I'm always going to get the rest of my team, you know, a week and a half later, and it's still going to be the same every year for a spring coach. So the timelines are weird in the spring, but at least the data is going to be similar year to year. So it is comparable um, annually, you know, if you're trying to look for improvements or something like that because the timing will always be the same in your seasons, so. Do you suggest, uh, is there, do you have best practice around, and I know not every school has this, but you know, our school has uh, an athletic director, much like you do, and then a few assistant athletic directors. Is there some sort of strategy that you have seen over the years that says the assistant AD immediately over the sport needs to be sending it out versus me, or I should be the only one doing it, or is there a combo? Like, what are your, what, what have you seen there? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, not everybody has uh, 14 assistant ADs like you do, Beck, but, um, you know, <laughs> uh, we, the way that we mostly see it work is that for, for not, us, I'm an assistant AD and then I'm not everybody, not everybody, go ahead. Uh, not everybody has a scratch golf or golf coach like you either. So, oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You've seen me play, you know, that's not true. But so what, what we do, the way that Jason and I manage it in our office is that I, I build all those focus times on his behalf. Um, I build the email to be sent. Um, and then uh, he, he and I split up, you know, doing those meetings with the kids. And then what we do on the back side of that is that I do the evals for the freshman JV teams and he focuses on the varsity coach eval. So like managing the data for freshmen and JV is what I do he manages the data for the varsity coaches because he's the, the evaluator of those coaches. What we do with the freshman JV then is I finish those and then I send those to the varsity coach and those coaches and their job is to go through those together. So we're kind of creating a, the varsity coach as the evaluator, you know, um, of their lower levels. And then part of their meeting with Jason is they have to be done with those lower level meetings. Um, when they come to the meeting with Jason. So then they kind of evaluate the varsity coach, but also the program during that meeting at the same time. Um, so that's kind of how we break it up. Um, I kind of do the back end work of like getting those things organized for him. Then we do the meetings together and then we split up who crunches the data by coach, uh, by level. Um, so if you, you guys have a couple ADs that kind of look at different sports, I, I mean, I think it'd be really good to, empower them to you know be managing those details and then sending them out and then you know you probably looking at the varsity things would be helpful and them managing the lower level parts of that kind of like we do would be probably a pretty good process in your in your environment so one more question i'm sorry uh so but there's nothing in the system that uh, every you you and jason can see everything right for every sport every level yep Yep. It's just you divide the workload up front to get it, to get the data. Just between us. Yeah. 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 So you're, you're set up and all of you are set up that way. Any person you need to access it, you just give me their email and I put it on there and they can sign in and access the data. Um, so, you know, Karen, if you have someone else that's going to help you, you just send me an email with that, with that address and um, I'll put it in there. And then both of you would be able to sign in kind of like Jason and I are able to sign in and see the same things. 
and have the same. I have zero uh, help. <laughs> okay. No help. Maybe Beck. Maybe Beck can loan somebody to you. Could I borrow a few people? <laughs> it's so, just no. me. <laughs> yeah. No, they 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 do a great job down there. But yeah. So yeah. Do you have or if you have like a um, you know someone that helps you with office assistance work in some way, they could do a lot of this behind the scenes, like prepping those emails, prepping that stuff for you. Um, to kind of help with that. And then, um, you know, you can just decide, I think you were going to start with just doing some varsity coaches. So that'll be a good way to start and feel out if you even want to add in, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have the margin to add in the lower level coaches, right? Um, yeah, I actually ended up doing all levels um, okay. for the winter season. So I'll probably do that again for the spring and then I'll, I'll see next year if I can maintain that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. 